Here he is, Robert Siegel. Robert Siegel. This is the non funny part. Okay, so I can just kind of be exactly. dry and uh, boring. Let's somber. bring it down a little bit. All right, all right. Well, Rob, uh, uh, Rob, Rob you're, uh, you're probably best known um, for your work on the movie, uh, The Onion Movie. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> IMDb searching motherfucker. Yeah. No. So, uh, yes, I, I, well, I, uh, <laughs> do I have to defend myself? No, I'm opening with a joke. Thank I'm you. opening with a joke. All right. No, but the Onion. Uh, you were the editor in chief of the Onion for a number of years. In addition to writing the, in addition to co-writing the Onion movie, I guess I also edited the Onion for nine years. So I like to think that maybe counts for more. But yes. No. That definitely. That definitely counts. The Onion. Probably the greatest thing to come out of Wisconsin ever. Probably. I don't since, know. Since. Uh, since. Uh, Gorman Thomas. Ron Dane. Yeah. Gorman Thomas. <laughs> Gorman Thomas. There you go. That was a good reference too. Though. I left the Onion in 2003, but before I left, I, uh, I started uh, kind of messing around uh, with screenplays kind of in my spare time. And um, I wrote a series of crappy comedy screenplays, and then uh, my breakthrough screenplay was, uh, was Big Fan, which I wrote before The Wrestler. And that's how I met uh, Darren Aronofsky. He, he read Big Fan and was uh, briefly attached to direct it and wound up not directing it, but then he, he uh, called me up and said, you know, how'd you like to write a movie about a wrestler, and I of course said yes. And yeah, it turned out okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. Thank you. Good decision. Yeah, I, the wrestler was fantastic. Uh, anybody see the wrestler here? We got any? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic movie. I had a question about it. I, I saw the movie and I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, a lot of heavy labored breathing, Mickey Rourke's character. Uh, did you write that all in? Was that part of the screen directions? Was a lot of just uh, heaving? I think that's just his uh, lungs. Just his lungs. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it just comes out. So that was Mickey's choice? The labored breathing? Well, it was a choice he made over the course of about 30 years of uh, abuse to Hard our body. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you come up with the name Lanny the Ram Omni? I mean, as, as a writer, I'm curious about these things. So just uh, you know, uh, I didn't want it to be too colorful. A lot of these wrestlers, you know, the, the actual, a lot of the wrestlers kind of have weird, semi-retarded nicknames. And then like, uh, they don't even make sense. Like um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Uh, I mean, he made up the says Dragon and Steamboat have. They're both fake names. Yeah, but they have nothing to do with each right. other. Dragons <laughs> and Steamboats. One is kind of a uh, Asian inspired, you know. Yeah. So if, if he wanted to be Ricky the Dragon, he could have like a whole. That's a whole separate thing. Maybe Asian motif. Yeah, have like an Ed Hardy T-shirt. And then the Steamboat is kind of a, a Mark Twain. Riverboat captain kind of vibe. So wh why would you put those two together? And they just, they, they're, they're, if you actually really study all the names, they're a little bit kind of random and half-assed. And uh, I didn't want it to be too colorful. So it was like, you know, Jake the Snake Roberts, um, one of those the names. Snake, the Ram, yeah. So Paul McCartney's album had nothing to do with it? Ram? Uh, Ram? Yeah. No. Uh, or Dodge vehicles? No. Uh, well, he was originally named uh, Pipes of Peace. Uh, it's a McCartney album. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, I figured if you know the album Ram, you yeah. know, you'd, you'd pretty, be pretty familiar with I'm pretty familiar, yeah. his full discography. Right. But you're not. <laughs> hey, can we talk about Big Fan? Sure, yeah. Before you guys make out. Well, um, <laughs> we were getting there, Kenny. We were getting yes. there. This is gone. Yeah, Peter, I, I, I got to watch your band. It's pretty sick. Like, how did you uh, capture that? Like, I mean, are you a yeah. nice fan? Because Pat Oswald no. is the, 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 he's every hardcore Jacks fan. You know, well, he's every. Yeah, I mean, with, with the exception of California teams, any anywhere you go, fans are like that. Yeah, you spend a lot of time there, or you want to? Yeah, he's just like kind of sad. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, he's. Um, I'm not that to that extreme, but I think all fans are kind of on that spectrum. Yeah. You know, um, I'm a Steelers fan though. Yeah, Steelers! Oh. <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I agree. I absolutely agree. As a writer, direct the movie. Now, I read an interview where you talked about like the very similitude of this thing. You wanted to use Giants. That was important, using the New York Giants. It was important to use real teams. Uh, as a sports fan, I, I just hated in movies where it's you know the New York Wizards and the, you know, the Washington Tigers. Right. You know, and it just takes, totally takes me out of the movie um, you know, on any given Sunday. Usually, usually that's what they do in, yeah. in uh, sports movies. 
um, out of fear of lawsuits and whatnot. Right. Um, but I, di I didn't want I didn't want to even make the movie if I had to do it that way. So I had a question about Patton Oswalt's accent as a Staten yeah. Islander. Was yeah. there ever a, a, was ever like you know what? Because everyone in the movie has these really thick yeah, New York yeah. accents. And he's the one guy who yeah, talks like yeah. Patton Oswalt. Well, I, I could justify it by saying he listens to the radio and he's he's kind of that's how he expresses his otherness. But but in truth, pa Patton just couldn't pull off the accent. Yeah, have you tried it with him? <laughs> yeah. Well, what we did was uh, we took him. You know, I didn't have m very much time in rehearsal. I, I I took him to a supermarket in Staten Island to soak up the uh, <laughs> the accent. And um, I didn't realize that he's like a, a godlike figure in Staten Island because of King of Queens. Oh. Everyone in Staten Island watches King of Queens. People didn't even know his name. They just started screaming Spence, which I didn't, is, is his character. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know either, but everyone there started when was freaking out and screaming Spence. So what I did was I, I wanted him to just kind of hear the accent and the way my, my genius plan was, I said, Patton, go up to just different people who work there, different, different um, supermarket employees, and ask where the toothpaste is. Um, and then we'd have like a little conversation and we'd pick up what they're saying and we'd, we'd kind of practice the accent. And, and there wasn't a single person that he went up to and asked about the toothpaste who didn't just start shrieking and screaming and, and, and taking pictures. And then, um, so, so that didn't work. And then we tried to, uh, I said, well, just try it, try the accent. So for the first day of the shoot, uh, he attempted an accent. Um, he's from Virginia. Um, it just, every, Every time he tried it, it just came out as Boston. Really? Yeah, like yeah. like when he would say ya yards, yeah. like yards. Yeah, yeah, he would say yards, and I and I I just said, you know what? This is could be this could sink the entire movie. Right. So I had to kind of make a an executive decision right there on the spot, and I had to gently kind of take him inside and tell him, you know, you're I appreciate the effort, but you're kind of doing a Boston thing. Yeah. And he, he didn't really, you know, he, that's how he heard New York. But uh, so, so yeah, we wound up just telling him no accent. That's a devastating moment for everyone when they're told that they can't pull off a Staten Island accent. That must have been, <laughs> must have crushed him. I would have happily, I would have accepted Queens. I didn't yeah. want this to be one of those movies where you're just kind of condescending to the main character and just making fun of him and treating him like a punching bag, you know. Right, right. But, uh, you know, I, 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 but I wanted to get close to that, you know, because that's, the humor is kind of in that, in that area. But, um. I just, you know, I, I respect him. You know, he, he has this thing. It's a little like in The Wrestler, uh, where, you know, there, there's a guy who's into this thing that most of society is into for free, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't really respect, doesn't take all that seriously. But for him, it's, you know, it's what makes him happy. And, um, you know, who are, we to, who are we to judge? I yeah. think that that's, you know, that, that's, it's, it's more than most people would say. You know, he's, got, he's got something that makes him happy and gives him fulfillment in life. Well, he sits in the booth at the art show. Yeah, he's he's one of these guys, and uh, for Scott Farrell, who's in the movie, he plays uh, he plays the radio host, uh, sports dog, and uh, he 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 said that callers are, his callers actually do this. He knows for a fact. He writes out his uh, his rant, like when he, when he calls in, you can see him walking around. With, you know, in that scene, he's walking around with these notebooks, and he's yeah. got kind of his trusty notebook, and he writes out his uh, his monologues in, in, in advance and. Uh, I would, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that definitely exists. I mean, I would do that. Whenever I was it's partially to. a crutch because you're nervous and you don't want to forget what you're going right. to say. Cause you, you know, and he's locked in his parking parking garage booth all day. He just keeps he probably just keeps thinking of brilliant things yeah. that he wants to say and he doesn't want to forget them. Right. But also, uh, it, it's kind of his art. You know, this is uh, this is his gift to the world. Right. Well, I used to do that right out. What I was going to say whenever I was about to call Joanna Goldstein, because I was so <laughs> nervous. You. She was gorgeous. Make sure I had it all together. So it's kind of, I can agree. I definitely identify with that aspect of character. Can I tell you my takeaway? But, but, but this was a movie. Yeah. Well, so I saw you. You're saying I shouldn't draw anything from this movie. I shouldn't take. No, anything. I'm saying it's sad that you did that in real life. Yeah. Some people actually like it better than the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, you really. Uh, Ninety percent. Really web savvy. I'm well, to yeah, some extent. Let's not. Yeah. IMDb. You know, I prepared for this. Unlike last time. It is. What, what, what's, the, what's the Rotten Tomato uh, tomatoometer right now? I think it's at 90. I think it, it dropped to 88. Oh. Yeah. I got a, I got a You're getting Google alerts? So I got a tomato splat. Tomato splat? <laughs> about a half an hour. Some guy walked by and threw a tomato in your face? Yeah, chud, uh, chud.com. Uh oh. Metacritic? Splatted me. Oh, jeez. Well, Robert, this is. I am. I am. You played Daniel, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. This is your first directorial debut. This is your directorial debut. This yeah, is like. I wanna, I wanna people are judging you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm going crazy Googling myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. 